I've always wanted to make a film. I started by making short films and it's been my passion. And I've been lucky in that when I graduated from film school, some of my short films caught uh, TV producers' attention. And it's, it was that period where, you know, as we all know now, it's the golden age of television. And so it's not TV versus film. It's just I was waiting for the right film to come along before I make one. I think the difference with, I mean, my approach is the same. I, uh, my approach for t making a piece of television and making a, a film were very, have always been very similar. The difference is with, with television, more often than not, you don't know what the ending is. You come on board and you're prepping it before the, the writer's even written an ending and you're sort of fumbling in the dark at times. But um, visually, the way I came up with the look, the feel was kind of the same. But the difference is television, you're allowed to go off on tangents. You know, it's uh, not that you can take the audience for granted, but they'll, they'll, you've got a much bigger canvas. And you've got something like six hours for a character arc, where a film is more like haiku. You've got 90 minutes. Every moment needs to earn its place. It has to be a, you're constantly asking yourself, why are people going to pay to come and see this film? Why are people going to leave their house, leave their homes, catch the bus? What's going to make them talk about this film and tell people to come out and see the film? So I think every moment has to really earn its place. You interrogate every beat and make sure you're making, you know, you're making every moment as special as it can be. I never had a burning desire to make a film about Belfast or the troubles. It, it, the screenplay, the script is what made it, made me want to do it. It came to me as a fully fully developed screenplay. Well, it was the first draft, a full draft, and I came and I read it and I immediately connected with the themes. I connected with the humanity in the film, the screenplay, and also you know I loved the way it tread the shades of grey and it was um, it felt pertinent. Sad to say. About it could have been. It felt like it could be about many conflicts that are going on in the world at the moment. And then you know, I had a take on it. I I, I met the writers and the producers, and I was like, I'd like to do it if we could. If it was like this, and and it wasn't. And we 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 just got on. It's one of those things. You know, you're lucky the stars align. I had a particular way I'd want to do it, and they fed off that. They were like, great. They took it as far as they could, and they needed more stimuli. And we saw eye to eye, and we. And I sort of, you know, steered it in a certain direction that everyone was on board with, and um, that was great in that respect. I had huge reservations about making the film when I first read it. I was like, well, who am I, first of all, to tell this story? You know, I'm French-born, grew up in a French-speaking household, Paris-born, raised in London. I'm not Anglo-Saxon or Gaelic. Or I'm from a French Algerian background. Um, so I interrogated it at every point. We made sure with the writer, I was like, I could only do it if we make sure we humanise everybody, if we engage with the shades of grey, if it doesn't feel like a polemic or like a, like a message movie. I was, and that's when I felt comfortable with it. I was like, you know, I wanted to talk about young boys caught in conflict on a very human level. And I felt comfortable with that. But you always ask yourself, you know, there's a, res there's a responsibility because you're making, in many ways, it's, it's a genre film. It works within genre though it's layered, some elevated, however you want to put it. The people in it aren't action act characters, they're real people. There's an emotional truth to it and to the way they behave. But you're always asking yourself, oh, we've got to make sure we're not taking a very painful recent period in people's history. There are people alive that are really affected by it and exploiting it to make a, a sort of exciting piece of entertainment. It wasn't allowed to do that. So, you know, we had, there was a responsibility and there was a, a worry, a concern, and it was something we just, but it was, a, it was a healthy thing. It meant everybody involved was always interrogating what they were doing it, why they were doing it, and what it means. And I think it's, a, it's very important to do that. Working with Jack Connell was great. You know, he was, like, I feel like I repeat myself a lot, but in that he's got this old school, masculinity that was right for the part. He's, he's cut from a different cloth to many boys of his generation. He, you know, he grew up wanting to be a football player or to join the army. He's very much the kind of boy that the film's about. You know, the kind of boy who, who's looking for a sense of place at a certain stage in his life, a sense of home, a sense of tribe, and was thinking about joining in the army. And he stumbled into acting instead, luckily for us. But you know, it's, it's not just about, when I talk about his old school qualities, it's not just about machismo or alpha male traits, or 
he's got a soulfulness, he's got a depth to him. You know, he's felt pain, he's had a life, not an easy one, and um, it means he can draw upon real emotions. I love shooting. Is there something about the camaraderie? It sounds cheesy, but it's something about... I've always been someone that likes to shoot. Like, I, you know, even when I was an assistant, I was on the floor. It's all about, you know, you're, you're all these people working towards one aim. They all want to make this film the best it can be. And we're all working together in that endeavour. And they're constantly throwing ideas at me, the crew that is, the heads of department. And they're co everyone's collectively trying to make this the best it can be. And they're constantly, like I say, chipping in ideas. And So I love to shoot. But the, the, my, my most fun bit of shooting it was possibly, technically was the explosion and, uh, and the riot. And then, you know, I really liked the whole sequence where he's, he's, um, he's at home with the doctor and his daughter. You know, there was lots of moments, but my favorite character was the kid, the tall, you know, the, the young boy who'd never acted before. We found him in the, in the boxing gym and the, he just like stole, stole all our hearts really on set. It was a great shoot in that, you know, I constantly, it's an ensemble cast, there was constantly lots of different people coming in and doing their, their bit. When I came on board, I wanted to shoot the film in Ireland. And Northern Ireland Screen were very supportive of us and the project and wanted us to go to Ireland. And I actually said, I'm only doing it if we shoot it in Ireland. It's about their, it's their story. Um, and we went there and the locations we need don't exist anymore. They've, you know, it's, they've built affordable housing instead and good Barrett homes and it's lost the period detail that we needed. And I was looking for a, a ringer for the Divis Flats and of course the Divis Flats on the Lower Falls Road have been torn down. So I needed a dead ringer for that and we, I searched high and low and actually I found a, a dead ringer for the estate for the Divis Flats in Sheffield. And that was 30 pages worth of material was on, is set on that one location. So you're like, that becomes the principal building block of the shoot. It's where you're spending the most time.